My research involves studying the neural circuits that control skilled movements. Uh, so one of the more impressive features of mammalian movement is our ability to move our limb very rapidly and quickly towards a target. So as a postdoctoral fellow in Tom Jessel's lab at Columbia University, I've been using the gen genetic accessibility of mice to try to, to identify and characterize different neural circuits in the brain and the spinal cord that help that ensure that when we move, our movements are smooth and precise. So in two different projects, we investigated two different circuits. One circuit that controls the strength of sensory feedback and ensures that our movements remain smooth rather than, than oscillating between flexion and extension. And in a second project, we investigated an internal feedback pathway that we think has the capacity to rapidly update movements and correct them throughout the course of a reach. So together, these two circuits sort of collaborate to ensure that our movements are smooth and that as we reach, we are able to achieve this, this fidelity between what we want to do and what we actually accomplish. Um, as far as my chances of winning the prize, you know, it was, it was really a surprise. I thought it was a long shot. We all, we all work on our specific questions in the field and, and our own little niche in neuroscience. And I knew that what we were finding had some implications, broader implications for larger questions in, in neuroscience, how different neural circuits control behaviors. But I didn't know if I could communicate our findings in a way that would resonate in the broader field. But, you know, I'm, I'm definitely glad that I tried. Uh, what motivates me since I began neuroscience research is trying to connect neural circuits to behavior. And I think studying skilled movements is a fascinating way to, to explore those questions. So m movement and the motor system and the spinal circuits especially are really well suited to these questions of trying to connect neural activity to behavior because we can trace a di pretty direct link between neural activity in the cord and behavioral output through muscle contraction and movement. So what really drives me is this, is this idea that, that we can, we can disentangle different circuits in the spinal cord and the brain and actually make a direct connection to how they control movement and gain insight into how human motor function and dysfunction might, might uh, arise. You know, like most scientists, what I really enjoy is that potent moment of, of surprising discovery, but those, those eureka moments are kind of rare. And what I enjoy just as much is that next stage, that when you take that surprising data and you try to make sense of it and design experiments to try to get a window into how the nervous system functions. And, what really excites me is that today in neuroscience we can combine these classical methods with these rapidly evolving modern methods and really sort of um, take a reductionist approach and, and manipulate one neuron element at a time and really try to make a connection between, between neural activity and behavior. And I think it's a really exciting time to be a neuroscientist. Uh, I think this prize will help me in the future in, in at least two ways. One, it's, it's made me really step back and consider how my questions of studying skilled movement fit fit into uh, the larger picture in neuroscience. And as I enter this next stage of my career, I'm, I've really been trying to gain perspective, and this prize has helped me gain perspective into how what I'm asking fits into the bigger picture that, that the field is interested in. And the second way uh, is I think this prize might help open doors as I enter this next difficult stage of establishing independence and trying to get my own funding. So for that, I'm very grateful to AAAS and Eppendorf for the honor of this prize and that help. In the future, I, I plan to uh, establish my own independent academic research uh, lab, investigating questions of how neural circuits control skilled behaviors. And in, in particular, I'm interested in the idea of trying to explore how the cerebellum uses feedback to refine movement. And more generally, I'm really interested in these questions of how does the changing complexity of motor circuits across development in an individual organism or, or across evolution, across multiple species, how does that changing complexity underlie the, the vast diversity, the vast repertoire of skilled behaviors that we see in mammals? So that's something I'd really like to continue to explore as I enter this next stage of my career. What motivates my research is trying to really understand what is behind neuropsychiatric disorders with the hopes of trying to find novel therapeutics. Currently, the approach most pharmaceutical companies have in treating uh, depression and other types of mood disorders is to just try different therapeutics and see what works. My research really looks at the underlying circuitry and how resilience naturally occurs with the hopes of trying to find targets to make more naturally acting therapeutics. What I enjoy most about my research is really trying to understand the mechanisms behind the neural circuitry of depression and different neuropsychiatric disorders. So really understanding how that works with the hopes of trying to treat people in a more naturally acting way is what really motivates me. My future research entails trying to understand how social support and uh, behavioral cognitive therapy actually works on the neural circuit level. So moving forward, I'm going to be looking at uh, models of 
autism and schizophrenia and anxiety and try to see how, how these support mechanisms actually make a difference while where pharmaceuticals have failed. My research work involves um, studying how the pattern of connectivity between neurons in the mouse primary visual cortex um, relate to their functional properties. And by functional properties, um, I'm referring to their feature selectivity, like what kind of visual stimulus they prefer. And in the past, it has not been very clear. We only have some indirect experimental evidence. We're not quite sure whether these neurons only sample uh, very specific input from their neighbors with very similar feature selectivity, or it's kind of a more non-specific connectivity scheme in which they just sample input um, from many cells around. The basic conclusions of the research is that uh, in more mature prim mouse primary visual cortex, pyramidal neurons with more similar feature selectivity, they form subnetworks, and um, this uh, developmentally, this this subnetwork structure emerged. Um, partially dependent on, well, it emerged after the onset of visual experience, and it's partially dependent on um, visual experience, such that even in the absence of uh, visual inputs, some, some kind of, some degree of maturation still occurs, some degree of refinement of functional specificity of synaptic connections still occur. Um, whereas for power women fast spiking uh, interneurons, um, they're different. They do not form, they do not get specific input from cells around. They get very dense, very non-specific uh, non excitatory inputs from pyramidal neurons around, which um, um, contributes to their broad tuning properties. What motivates me in my research is that I like things that are precise. I like things that are mechanistic and and I really like working out how like things work. And to me, I think one of the most important mixing, missing links um, in the field of neuroscience um, towards a, a, com a more complete understanding of how the brain works is, our, is that we do not have enough understanding of um, the logic of circuitry underlying um, functionality. Studying connectivity, the connectivity between neurons um, fulfills my, um, it gives me a feeling of satisfaction because I feel like I'm um, doing something that will help us understand how neuronal network works. Doing research, you go through periods of ups and downs. Sometimes you get really frustrated, sometimes you're happy. And this is definitely a very positive reinforcement uh, to me, encouraging me to go further. The Eppendorfen Science Prize is unique because we are looking for um, young scientists at a very early stage in their career and um, we want to find out who can a do good science but also bring this good science across. First we collect all the entrants and we look at uh, formalities so some of them may perhaps be too old to be eligible for the prize and all the others then will be judged in the first round by the editors of science. Um, we give uh, numbers for them and then we try to see um, which ones will be in the top category. And we are looking for two things. One is the quality of the research itself and also the quality of the essay. The essay, how it is written, how it grabs the reader, how it makes the enthusiasm of the writer come across. And once we have whittled it down to about a group of six or seven, then we will apply, a, we will approach the um, outside um, judges. They are usually provided by the Society for Neuroscience and we will have a video conference. They will read the essays and then we together discuss um, who is going to be the overall winner. As our experience was in the last couple of years, the level of the science was outstanding. Uh, really, um, they all came from top labs, had done extremely important stuff themselves, very often independently, and it really showed. So we had to select from a large group of very promising, outstanding young scientists. 
this year's winner stood out in many ways. Um, when we started reading it, everyone was immediately grabbed by the power of his writing. He brought across clearly that he was enthusiastic about his job, that he really liked the experiments he had done. And um, he also brought across that it was a rather sophisticated approach. So in a relatively short essay, he managed to bring all these points across. So the judges unanimously agreed that this was a, that this was a winner. Um, even I, even if I have not had not won uh, like a runner of position, or I, I would still have benefited from this process of writing because it was a good time for me to look back what I have done so far and what the implications of my work are and uh, what is the future direction I should go. What else I can do. My advice for anybody thinking of submitting a prize entry is definitely do it without hesitation. It's a very fun and, and useful exercise to try to step out of our daily mode of thinking and, and really consider how what we're asking and, and the findings that, that, that our research uh, is bringing about kind of, kind of fit into the larger questions that concern neuroscientists more generally. And you know, in addition to giving you this perspective, there's always the bonus that there's a chance you might win. So definitely try to apply.